Hey, what's up? Hello, everybody. Welcome to Roll Pod, an Alabama sports podcast from Bama 247. I am staff writer Cody Goodwin, and I am glad you're here again. We're recording this on a Monday night. Going to have a few disclaimers here throughout tonight's show. And you're probably listening on Tuesday, but we are just now one day away from the early signing period, which runs Wednesday, December 20th through Friday, December 22nd. Huge, huge, huge uh, period of time. Few days here on the recruiting calendar in Alabama, of course expected to play a starring role, according to our experts at 247 Sports. Crimson Tide are expected to sign about 19 recruits during this early window, which is the vast majority of their 2024 recruiting class. That includes a couple of five stars, a bunch of four-star recruits, um, You know, six in the top 100, maybe seven or so, um, two more that are in the top 150. It is considered, uh, as of this recording, top five overall class in 247's 2024 recruiting team rankings. Um, alongside, you know, the likes of Georgia, Ohio State, Texas, Florida State. So another really, really good recruiting class for Nick Saban and company. Alabama going to add a few more and likely mine the transfer portal for a few other players as well. But this early signing period has really become the signing period for elite college football programs. If you're listening to that, you're probably a diehard Alabama fan, so you know all about this. On today's show, we're going to talk a lot of recruiting. Um, We're here to discuss basically all of that and more with our own recruiting expert, Brett Greenberg, who has been working nonstop, it seems like. Um, it doesn't just seem like it. Like, he is absolute. Like, I don't know that he's actually gotten a ton of sleep um, for the past week plus to keep us up to date on anything and everything Alabama recruiting. Brett, we appreciate you taking some time out of your busy schedule to join us. How are you holding up, man? Like, have you gotten much sleep over the last few weeks? Or, or what, what, what's, what are the vibes like in, in your orbit right now? Yeah, you know, always great to have be on here with you, Cody. But, yeah, not a whole lot of sleep, but, you know, it, it, if the coaches can do it, so can I type thing. Um, happy to do it. But yeah, you kind of encapsulated all we're going to talk about here. And, you know, it's only right we kind of start off the show tonight. Again, you know, this may you might be hearing this on Tuesday, but Alabama got a little bit of a surprise commitment uh, Monday night at around eight or seven o'clock Eastern time and four star Jason, Jason Ross, number 18 edge in the country out of uh, Kansas City, Missouri. Shout out Cody, his neck of the woods. Woo! <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I say surprise commitment, just, you know, I wasn't made aware of it, but this has kind of been in the folds for a while. Uh, Alabama offered Jay Sean Ross, I believe at the end of October, immediately made official visit plans to come for LSU weekend, was told that visit went extremely well. Uh, Nick Saban and a couple of assistant coaches were uh, on the road, saw him in Kansas City at Liberty North last week. Another good enough conversation to get him to come down actually for an unofficial visit this weekend was down here for about 24 hours. Got to speak with Nick Saban, got to speak with a couple other coaches and that kind of sealed the deal, so to speak. You know, I, quite frankly, could have probably put a little bit more on my radar once I saw he was coming down here. All point, all signs kind of pointing to Alabama being the team to beat there and certainly come out on top. You know, you're still trying to figure out exactly what his plans are as far as early enrollee or, you know, wait until the summer or something like that. It was originally, you know, he was talking with 247 Sports, Steve Wilfong. Uh, wasn't sure if he's going to graduate early or not. I think, I believe he will. And I believe he, the plan is to go and join the team for bowl practice uh, up in California. Uh, we're still going to see how that works out. But yeah, you know, it's another, another edge guy. We've seen the need or, you know, the presumed need in that, at that position with, you know, LT Overton, Fidel Diggs, and, you know, Trey Moore coming in, all at our defensive line edge guys. Uh, clearly, that's going to be a position that Alabama is looking to add, you know, whether it be a high school prospect or through the portal, uh, just with losing Chris Braswell and Dallas Turner. But just to get another guy in the fold, uh, add another edge guy is always a good thing. And certainly after that edge class uh, last year with Keon Keeley and Yonze Pierre and Quay Rousseau and James Smith, uh, you know how Alabama likes to stack up their roster and certainly got a little bit better in the trenches. Uh, hope to maybe speak with him as soon as possible to get his exact plans out. But, you know, I was talking with a couple of now analyst guys and, you know, he actually played offense uh, a little bit last year as well. You know, list as a tight end, 6'4", 220, but kind of let him loose on defense and, you know, had a great year, 23 tackles, I believe it was 11 sacks or something like that. So certainly, uh, a very big get for Alabama and, you know, some good news, you know, it's, I guess that's kind of the second early present before early signing day, so to speak with, you know, obvious reclassification of Ryan Williams, you know, five-star wide receiver at his, out of uh, Sarah land, Alabama, who's remained, you know, locked in with Alabama these next couple months up until he signs in February are going to be pretty hectic, but, you know, I think we're more focused on what's going to go on in the next couple of days. 
We will, uh, we're going to get to Ryan Williams and the rest of the 2024 class later in the show. Obviously, you've got a lot of intel that we want you to share with us here. Not everything, though. We're going to leave a lot more stuff behind the paywall. Um, so if you're not a Bama 247 subscriber, now is the time because Brett has been cranking out at least two or three or four things every single day. Um, put up another thing. Uh, we're recording this again Monday evening. He put up another thing, um, you know, not too long ago, just with more notes and intel and everything that he's hearing about all these recruits um, that we're going to touch on, um, you know, a lot that we're going to get into on today's show. Obviously going to talk about the guys who are going to sign, right? Some of the guys that we're excited about seeing, some of the guys who we think could have an immediate impact, um, you know, maybe some other, you know, we're, we're going to have Brett maybe tease a few of the other things that he's got primed up for later this week. Also going to touch on one Alabama assistant coach who has been uh, doing a lot of work on the recruiting trail in this cycle. We'll get to him later, but first Brett, um, with signing day approaching, I was really going to cede the floor to you kind of with any information and intel and details that are left in your notebook, right? That are, you know, kind of, you know, what what's shining uh, the brightest light over the next few days, right? I know the entire Alabama coaching staff has made a round of in-home visits over the last couple of weeks. I know a handful of recruits, even some guys in the transfer portal. Um, we can have that conversation too. Um, we're on campus this past weekend for an official visit. Recruiting is literally a nonstop business, but what kind of what are you hearing or, or what are you feeling? What do you know about Alabama recruiting um, kind of as we hit this final sprint, right? I mean, you already mentioned kind of the, you know, the late commit here um, with Jay Sean Ross from Kansas City, um, another edge rusher, second edge rusher, I believe, of the 24 class, him and Sterling Dixon from Spanish Ford are both coming in. So a lot of, lot of younger edge rushers in Alabama's, um, you know, outside linebackers, less edge rusher room that's going to be, you know, as of, you know, I guess really going into next year, right? But I, what, what other intel are you hearing? Like, what else do you want to share? Kind of, you know, empty your notebook as you see fit here, man. I'm going to cede the floor to you. Kind of what's what's on your mind? Yeah, again, this is going to be, you know, this is recorded on Monday night. So like Cody said, it's a nonstop business. Recruiting is very fluid. And certainly in these last couple hours, you know, I was joking with Cody earlier. I put out this, you know, kind of Monday notebook dump of what I've been hearing, you know, today and, you know, pu hit publish and then Jay Sean Ross commits. So, you know, some of these things I'm going to be hitting on, some of the things Cody and I are going to be hitting on may not be relevant, you know, 10 minutes from now or 12 hours from now. But again, we're going to continue to provide the latest updates and intel on Bama 247. But yeah, I think, you know, looking at my Monday PM notes, I think the biggest storyline, and it has been, I think, since the summer is, you know, just still no running back committed in the class. And again, you know, I kind of preface every article I talk about with the running back position of, you know, that's not necessarily a dire need for the 2024. The 2024 position room, you know, unless we see some unexpected guys move on or transfer or go to the NFL or something like that. I don't think it's a position group or position room. That's going to really need a running back. That said is Alabama going all in for one, two, maybe even three guys. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we talked about it kind of at nausea in the last couple of weeks, but Arkansas four-star Arkansas running back commit Jaden Baugh out of Decatur, Georgia, uh, just wrapped up an official visit to Alabama over the weekend was in Gainesville, Florida, the weekend prior, uh, spoke with his father, Seems like it was a pretty good visit, um, you know, just from the tone and speaking with him. It seems like Florida's probably going to be the spot uh, for Jaden. You know, 10 minutes after we got off the phone with him, he decommitted from Arkansas. So the Razorbacks are officially out. Um, you know, that's kind of been the in the know for a while. I was just waiting for him to make that official. So it's down to, you know, the Gators and the uh, Crimson Tide, you know, speaking with people at the close to the Gators program in Alabama seems like. Florida seems like they're in a better position for him, but you never want to count out Alabama. That's one guy to keep a keep your eye on. He'll be signing in, on uh, Wednesday about 6 o'clock Central Time. Uh, so he's one guy we're going to continue to monitor, obviously. And then another guy is Kevin Riley, four-star Miami running back commit. In Alabama's backyard, went to Tuscaloosa County High School up in Northport, just across the bridge. Uh, so he kind of grew up an Alabama fan. Um you know, about a week, week and a half ago, I would probably not even be bringing up his name. You know, it seemed like Miami locked him down, seemed like that was going to be the case. They were even in to see him uh, was, was earlier last week and try to not let him take this official visit to Tuscaloosa over the weekend. Because, you know, my, I think coaches understand getting, you know, their commits or their recruits on Alabama's campus late in the game is never usually a great thing um you would probably do better without that if you're another if you're another team uh you know heard that was another great visit um you know he kind of keep keeping his stuff close to the vest it's going to be 
uh, kind of a waiting game to see where he goes. It seems like it's going to be between Miami and Alabama. You know, both sides talking with both sides seem to be pretty good about it. Miami may be a little bit more comfortable. Um, so, you know, between those two guys, I do think Alabama is going to land one. But at the end of the day, like I you know hit on a little bit earlier, if they don't land on any, I do not think it is the end of the world. Uh, and then as, as long as we're on the running back topic, another guy is <laughs> Daniel Hill, who we've talked about repeatedly, you know, for months and months. He's, you know, was supposed to commit in August and October. Then it kept on getting delayed. He'll he'll actually uh, sign on privately on Wednesday and then announce his plans during the All-American Bowl uh, NBC's live broadcast on January 6th, which I'll be there. That'll be a great time. Excited for that. Um, that's kind of where we're at on the running back room. And then as far as, you know, with the fallout of Jimbo Fisher a and and the hiring of Mike Elko and uh, some uncertainty there, there was a couple names that we were following of potential flip targets. One guy we mentioned early was Dalen Evans, but that's kind of died out. And then another guy we, you know, about a week ago, I felt very confident in Alabama's chance to, you know, maybe bring out a flip and a three-star linebacker, Tristan Jernigan out of Tupelo, Mississippi. But after speaking with, you know, people close to him, people close to A&M program, seems like Mike Elko and his staff have done an excellent job down the stretch of kind of locking in guys who, you know, maybe were wavering with, with the Jimbo Fisher uh, departure and, and, you know, getting some guys as well. And one of those guys is Solomon Williams, four-star edge out of uh, Tampa, Florida, Alabama's kind of been in the running for him since his official visit in June, kind of the leader, it seemed like. But, you know, he was in uh, College Station this weekend for an official visit, and it seemed like it kind of blew him away, did really well, and it seems like AM's kind of the team to beat. I say all that, you know, knowing, too, Alabama's never out of it. Uh, I know we're at the dead period now. You can't contact commits but recruits, but Alabama's never out of any recruitment. But those are two guys that, you know, maybe a week, week and a half, two weeks ago, I thought a little bit more confident about Alabama landing. But now I see them kind of going in a separate direction. And then, you know, this weekend, like you hit on, we had a couple transfer or Alabama had a couple transfers in town to two running back uh, recruits, flip targets and Jane Bond, Kevin Riley. And then, you know, brought some surprise visitors. Uh, Bryce Underwood, the number one quarterback in 2025 was in there. We'll, you know, We'll hit on that and provide a little bit more coverage on the 2025 guys after this uh, go around this week. Um, and then another guy who, you know, was pretty much a shock to be there. I, you know, I had heard there we're talking, you know, pretty often, but I didn't know it was this serious was Edric Houston, five star defense alignment. Uh, committed to Ohio State. He's one of those guys, a Buford High School guy in Alabama, has kind of seen that connection with Isaiah Bond and Seth McLaughlin and Justice Haynes. And, uh, you know, Nick Saban's dipped into Buford and T-Rob has great relationship with all those guys over there. And, you know, seems like they've kind of entered the fold. And for him to come take an unofficial visit this weekend, you know, meanwhile, all you know, albeit only 24 hours, I think is a big deal. I was talking with his you know, Buford assistant coach and recruiting director, Fyron Davis. And he said, you know, we're not taking these visits just because, you know, if we're taking a visit, it's going to be, you know, this is serious. He also took a visit to Clemson over the weekend as well. It seems like the Tigers are kind of out of it, uh, you know, connected with coach Davis again on Monday afternoon, not really true updates there. It seems like it's really up in the air right now. I know his heart's with Ohio state and the defensive line coach is playing a big role over there. Uh, I know he's spoken with both staffs recently, um, but I truly think he's, you know, starting to really, you know, get down to it and think about it and say, hey, you know, do I want to kind of stay closer to home? Because we had heard some things about that maybe being a possibility. And, you know, like I mentioned, uh, the view for his former high school teammates with Jake Pope and all those other guys, uh, they've played a big role in this as well. You know, I was talking with Coach Davis. He was saying they've taught they talk all the time. You know, Jake Pope and Isaiah Bond and those guys were, hey, come visit. Like, you know, we're successful here. You can be successful here. And that's big for Edric Houston, you know, Alabama was actually the runner up to him when he committed in late August. So, you know, Freddie Roach and Nick Saban could, you know, looking to maybe do it again. I know last year we saw a five-star flip in Caden Proctor and in years past, we've seen it multiple other on multiple other occasions. So this is another case of it. You know, I don't, I, right now I'm not ready to give a prediction or anything like that. Uh, maybe come Tuesday morning, there is more information than I am. And now I'm, now I'm sounding outdated, but uh I, I, I just the fact that Alabama has a chance, I think, kind of speaks volumes. But r right now, I'm you know still kind of leaning towards Ohio State. Uh, there'll certainly be a lot of conversations to be had in the next you know 24, 48 hours leading up to that signing. He'll be one to follow a lot as well. And then another guy is obviously uh, five-star Auburn receiver Perry Thompson at a Foley. Uh, most Alabama fans know, and Cody, you know, he kind of took the recruiting 
world by storm in late July. Uh, you know, was the flip from Auburn to Alabama, made some comments about his reasoning uh, and things like that. Was the first five star in Hugh Freeze 2024 class and kind of kick started that big run for them. You know, I know they're in the top 10 class, I believe, number nine. Uh, you know, the, a lot of these, there's a lot of talk going on between all these Alabama and Auburn receivers. And, you know, Perry ho- posted a picture of, of his in-home visit last week hosting, you know, Nick Saban, Kevin Steele, Holman Wiggins. And, you know, I personally don't think you welcome those guys into your home or Nick Saban's going to spend the time with you unless this is a real factor. Um, but, you know, with speaking with people close to the Auburn program, people close to Perry's, Perry's commitment, I don't, I, I think this is kind of a lot of smoke. Um, I don't really think I would be, you know, I would just be shocked if he doesn't put on an Alabama hat or, or excuse me, Auburn hat or Auburn sh- shirt or whatever he chooses to do on Wednesday. But of course, you know, we'll be continuing to follow that. Another guy is, you know, one of, one of Alabama's commits is Jameer Grimsley, four star cornerback. Florida continued to push very hard. He's out of Tampa, Florida. Uh, the Gators pushed extremely hard, even when he committed. Since he has been committed to Alabama, I believe it was July one over Michigan and Florida. He grew up at a Florida fan. His, his family is Florida fans, but you know he took an official visit. He took a game visit. You know, talking with him, they, they he talked about Alabama's stability and just knowing that Nick Saban's going to be there. And you know, with the uncertainty in the defensive back room in Gainesville, I know they've hired somebody since then, but that kind of played a big factor. Uh, the plan is, you know, he announced he'll sign on Wednesday, and I believe he'll join the team for a uh, bowl practice following Christmas. Um, and then earlier this week or late last week, uh, losing track of my days late last <laughs> week, uh, I, I submitted a crystal ball prediction for a priority offensive tackle favor Edwin out of McDonough, Georgia, six foot seven, 300, uh, kind of just a offensive line coach's dream, just sheer size. You know, he, he's only played football for one year, but he's going to, you know, he, he talked about it with me, just how, you know, he wants to go to a place where he can develop. He doesn't need, necessarily need to start from day one. He will not start day from one. If, day one if he ends up at you know Auburn Alabama or Florida but I still continue to think Alabama is in the best position to land him and I think you know I was talking with Andrew Ivins about it 247 national analyst and he's like these are the guys you you, you got to get I mean you never know what happened in the in the age of the transfer portal and things like that and NIL and things like that if a guy's going to be loyal to you and he and he has the measurables and you can mold him and you know clay clay like type mold he he's going to be valuable one to two years from now um you know he's going to sign on Wednesday continue to feel really good about him and then another guy is another international guy fit with favor Edwin Beaton from Cameroon uh Steve Mubamba out of Canada four-star defense alignment took an official visit two weeks ago spoke with him and his trainer uh continue to feel very good about where Alabama stands he took an official visit to Mississippi State this weekend uh to check out new head coach Jeff Levy I think it was kind of a you know just a small check-in kind of a formality at this point you know I haven't put a crystal ball prediction in yet I you know still plan to speak with his trainer or himself Steve uh, before I do that, but you know, again, still like where Alabama stands. Uh, that's kind of it on my Monday dump. There's a little bit more uh, notes in there, uh, and all over Bama two four seven did you know kind of confidence picks with every remaining target earlier this morning. Going to have you know storylines tonight or excuse me tomorrow morning and continued updates all over Bama two four seven, as well as you know Cody hit on a little bit some more stuff coming throughout the week. I know Cody's working on a little bit of things where you know we've we've. Got a great plan for these next couple of days just with, you know, coverage of signees and, and analysis and stuff like that. And going to have a whole lot more content for you guys for the next couple of days leading up to everybody's, you know, Christmas holiday where hopefully we can all relax for a little bit. But, you know, we'll see. <laughs> that is that's a lot of information. Um, again, we want to stress that recruiting is a 24 seven type of deal. Um, things are going to move pretty quickly. So by the time you guys listen to this, and this will be posted very early on Tuesday morning, um, things could have continued to move. So just want to make that super clear. A lot of this information coming out, um, just things are moving fast, um, especially as we close in um, on the official first day of the early signing period. Um, If you want to stay up to date on everything, please subscribe to Bama 247, where Brett has all this stuff going in real time as it's happening, as things are developing. He's done a great job of that. As you just heard, an absolute boatload of information. I want to I want to take a step back now um, and just kind of take a take kind of a big picture view of, of Alabama's 2024 class now. 
Um, you know, we can kind of leave all the moving parts to the side for the moment. Hopefully um, news doesn't break while we're recording here. But just the class as a whole, um, when you look at it, there's obviously a pretty big priority on a lot of players on the defensive side of the ball, right? You've got a lot of defensive backs like Jalen Mbakwe and Xavier Brown and Jameer Grimsley is another guy that you had mentioned. And then Peyton Woodyard, uh, Dre Kirkpatrick Jr., right? Legacy recruit. Um, you know, you look at defensive line and edge rushers, right? Isaiah Faga, Sterling Dixon. We talked about Jay Sean Ross. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of that. That seems to be one of the bigger themes when you look at this class as a whole, like where, where are a lot of the guys playing at what, what room is going to expand, right? Like what positional room is going to expand. Um, the other one too is receiver. And this is another one that we'll kind of get to, or maybe, maybe pass catcher is probably the better way to describe that. Right. We'll, we'll have the Ryan Williams conversation here in just a minute. Um, Cause I think that's probably worth its own little conversation, but there's Ryan Williams, there's Caleb Odom tight end. Um, you know, you look at um, some of these other Rico Scott, receiver coming in Jay Lindsay um, who looks every bit like he's going to be Robbie Oots 2.0 when he gets here um, not just in like facial recognition but just like the way he plays the tight end position like it just it looks like it's a perfect little slide in fit um, what are some of your big picture takeaways when you look at this class overall what do you feel like Alabama accomplished the most um, in terms of maybe their to-do list when it comes to this 2024 class yeah, I think, you know, you kind of hit on it right there, but right off the bat, the the secondary hall we've seen with Alabama, especially with last year after getting a guy like Des Ricks and a couple other highly rated guys, between Xavier Brown and Jalen Mbakwe, Peyton Woodyard, Rydarius Morgan, Dre Kirchpacker Jr., uh, Jameer Grimsley, the, these are guys that I, I think can all play, you know, not immediately, but, you know, within the next one to two seasons, they stick at Alabama. I mean, Xavier uh, Brown's, you know, number three cornerback in the country. He, he seems like he just carries that Alabama mindset, you know, committed to Alabama and then kind of was radio silence, wanted to go play for Matter Day, try to go win a state championship, which he ultimately did. Um, and, you know, he, he he's there for bowl practice. Jalen Mbakwe is going to join there soon. Peyton Woodyard's there soon, or, or is there as well. Drake Kirkpatrick is also there. Right, Aries Morgan's going to join on Wednesday. So to have all those guys in the fold at practice is, is a very big deal. And, you know, I, I, I think, you know, we've seen it with Nick Saban year after year. You can never have too many quarterbacks. Um, so I, I think that's a point that sticks out. And then, you know, yeah, the pass catchers, maybe not as highly rated. You know, Ryan Williams aside, you know, you see a couple four stars. We've seen Amari Jefferson kind of rise up the ranks. He had a great year over 1,400 yards, 20 touchdowns. Him and Rico Scott both going to sign this week, but not enroll until the summer. Um, I know that's maybe not exactly what Alabama fans want to hear. Of course, you want to have the most, you know, in early enrollees as you can as as possible to come in. But, you know, Caleb Odom's, Odom is, I believe, at practice already. Uh, he's a guy that I think Alabama is going to probably have to figure out exactly what they want to do with him. Um, you know, I know he's listed as a tight end, but he's 6'4", 215 pounds, soaking wet. You know, he kind of plays outside the numbers the whole his whole career at Carrollton High School. Um you know, he kind of reminds me a little bit of Anar Amari Nyblack. Um, Amari was maybe a little bit bigger than him coming in, but I can kind of see him filling that role and adding, you know, giving Tommy Reese another wrinkle with his two two tight end sets or, you know, transition him fully outside. Um, and then as far as, yeah, it, you know, the edge commits and the D-line commits, I, I like them all a lot. And then uh, certainly at O-line too, you see Joseph Ayanada and William Sanders, you see – you know, they're three stars. I've got a lot of questions about that. You know, why is Alabama only getting three stars? I've said it, you know, to a couple of people before, too. Uh, you know, the 2024 class as a whole is, you know, talk with some people not as talented as years past and certainly at the offensive line position. I know Alabama was in it for a lot of guys back in the summer and, you know, missed a couple of guys went to Georgia and Texas and other schools like that. But I think Alabama is just fine at the offensive line position. I love Casey Poe. I, I've talked about Casey Poe a lot. I love his mindset. I, I think he just fits Alabama's mold, you know, for, for and every aspect of his game, mentally, physically, on the field, off the field, things like that. And, you know, again, I, it, we've seen it firsthand how hard it is to be a successful offensive lineman in the SEC with Caden Proctor. We've seen his improvement. But, you know, with the uncertainty at the center position and Casey Poe set to play center, uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he contributes extremely early. But, yeah, overall, you know, and talk with national not analysts too, you know, this isn't the number one class. This isn't with nine – you know, seven, five stars of, of last year and years past. I understand that completely, but, you know, I think Alabama did a nice job of 
you know, going out and getting their stars, you know, with Jalen Mbakwe and Julian saying as the five stars, and then also getting some guys that maybe necessarily aren't going to, you know, hop up and leave immediately if they don't play. I mean, we've seen that with so many schools and so many cases with where the transfer portal is. You know, a lot of these guys seem to carry that, you know, that mindset and talking to them that I, I, I'm not asking to start day one. I, I want to be developed by the best. I want to practice against the best. And that's why I'm coming here. So I think Alabama was selective with that as well. And then, you know, certainly how this play, the rest of these couple of days play out. I mean, you can go into the transfer portal and kind of get whoever you want. If you're Alabama, I, I know that maybe they're a little behind right now just with, you know, getting with bowl practice and maybe not looking, being as active as other schools. But that goes back to kind of the same that we talked about in the summer too. Alabama kind of has that luxury of, maybe taking a little bit longer to evaluate and talk and converse with players and coaches and things like that. Yeah. I think the, 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 the D line slash edge group, um, you know, these guys who were coming in, Jeremiah Beeman, Sterling Dixon, Jay Sean Ross, um, Isaiah Faga, like those, you know, one, I think, similar to cornerbacks and defensive backs, right? Like you, you want to replenish the D line rotation, every year like you want dudes that'll come you know like we saw this past year like james smith true freshman highly touted maybe only played seven to ten snaps a game there were a few games where you know fourth quarter he's able to get a few more snaps but you know when you've got the emergence of tim keenan and you've got a boyd b and then you've got otis and tim smith going back and forth and then you you know the the second tier rotation right you've got a lot of dudes that can play a lot of snaps like sometimes the freshmen aren't always going to play maybe as much as they want to but like when a boyd b's gone um, you know, Tim Smith's going to be leaving after this year. You're going to have to replenish that, right? So James Smith is going to step up and probably play more. Jamarian Latham's probably going to step up and play more. Jeremiah Beeman's a guy who could step in and and do that. You know, if these edge guys, you know, maybe grow into defensive ends, and that could very well be a possibility because there are a lot of young defensive, you know, edge rushers that are in Alabama's room right now. Like, you know, some of those guys could grow into the next defensive end and work their way into the D line rotation. That's an entire, that's a possibility as well. What really interests me, and I'm kind of curious what you think, all of these defensive backs, and, and we rattled them off, right? Jalen Mbakwe, um, Peyton Woodyard, uh, Jameer Grimsley, uh, Zabian Brown, Drake, Drake Kirk Jr., like a lot of a lot of really talented guys, and they're joining a defensive back room that again has a lot of really young talented guys. Um, you know, Antonio Kite, Des Ricks, right? Jake Pope, Tony Mitchell, guys who have gotten some snaps, but not a ton because you've got Kool-Aid and Terion and Malachi Moore and Jalen Key and Caleb Downs will be back next year. Um, and so will Trey Amos, who's been fantastic off the bench behind Kool-Aid and Terion. Um, but I wonder, and I'm you know, pairing these couple of things together. You look at, you know, the edge room, a lot of young guys, not a ton of experience. It makes sense that Alabama is targeting at least one experienced edge rusher in the transfer portal. We haven't heard a lot of noise yet about Alabama potentially going after another experienced defensive back, right? Whether it be a safety or a corner. I know they really love Caleb Downs and he'll be back. They really love Trey Amos. He'll be back. It makes you wonder the combination of the 2024 signees that are coming in, right? Five-star with Jalen Mbakwe leading the way. Um, who, by the way, Pinson, Alabama native, who was the last five star from Pinson, Alabama to show up, Kool Aid McKinstry. Things turned out all right by him. And it seems like Jalen Mbakwe is made of the same stuff, but that's a different conversation. Um, but like confidence in those guys, confidence in, you know, the Des Ricks crowd and the Tony Mitchells and the Antonio Kites and the guys that are going to be following up behind them. You know, I wonder if they just feel that good that maybe that's why they're not looking, at least right now, at defensive back through the portal. A lot of this can change, right? The portal, this early windows open until January 2nd um, for the four teams that are in the playoff, those guys, you know, as those teams lose, they have, you know, I think an additional week to enter their name in the portal. Um, you know, obviously Alabama is preparing for a national semifinal. So maybe their focus isn't entirely on the portal. And then, oh, by the way, after spring practice, there's another two week window in the portal in late April that, you know, maybe they'll be a lot more active in because at that point you'll have all these young guys at edge at defensive back that, you know, you'll finally get to see them go through what eight to 10 practices plus a live scrimmage. Maybe that'll give them a little bit more Intel into whether or not they should go after some of these guys. Right. Um, that's a lot of thoughts throwing it out there. The point here is that it seems like Alabama, you pair all the young defensive backs from the 2023 class with a lot of these younger guys and talented guys who are coming in with 2024. It seems like Alabama's coaching staff feels good. What do you think? Yeah, I, I you know, I, I kind of agree with everything you're saying there. And, but like, like you said too, 
you know, whenever you want to replenish that defensive line, Nick Saban has been known to replenish that secondary hall every single season. Like you said, bringing in those guys from last year and now bringing in, clearly that's a point of emphasis this year as well, bringing in, you know, six and possibly seven guys. You know, Alabama is still targeting Zay Mincy, a four-star safety out of Daytona Beach, Florida. You know, Alabama's kind of in it with Florida, Miami, and Florida State, so those three in-state schools. But, yeah, I, I, you know, I don't – I don't know necessarily if Alabama is, okay, here's who we got right now and here's who's coming in. We're comfortable with it. I I, I think, I mean, just like Caden Proctor with five, you know, being a, at a left tackle, I, I think cornerback is one of the most difficult positions in, in football as well. And certainly being a freshman in the SEC, you know, I know Caleb Downs play safety and, you know, he's kind of anomaly. He's different. You know? He's very, yeah, he's, he's very, very know. different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, maybe we'll talk about Jalen Mbakwe like that. Maybe you know down. Well, yeah, because well. Caleb or Kool Aid McKinstry was different, right? Too like he he played a lot as a true freshman, and then they plugged him in as a starter as a sophomore, and now he's going to be a first round draft pick here in a few months. Like sometimes yeah. guys just get it, which makes me excited to watch Jalen Mbakwe. Right? I think he's another dude that could potentially see a similar trajectory. Um, you know, but then you, you know, Des Ricks was, you know, a top rated cornerback prospect. I know they really like what Jake Pope brings, just the consistency and the way he's able to hit. Although he seems to play a little bit more of Caleb down safety position than maybe more of a coverage safety. We'll kind of see what they do with him there. Um, but I don't know. It just seemed like, you know, in this early window, the priority was on an edge rusher, not a defensive back, even though I feel like Alabama could use um, a little bit more experience in the defensive back room, looking ahead to the 2024 roster or the depth chart and just kind of what they're going to make up with, um, you know, and if for nothing else, right, like they, they brought in, like, here's a couple of examples, right? They brought in Eli Ricks from LSU, right? And him and Terry on Arnold kind of went back and forth and Eli Ricks, once he got healthy, was the dude there for the rest right. of the season. They did the same thing this past off season, right? They bring in Trey Amos, a guy who's experienced, maybe not a lot of SEC experience, but a guy that can clearly play, right? Like we saw that over the course of the season. Terry on Arnold kind of took that step this year and claimed the second corner spot and had a fantastic all American level season. Um, you know, so I wonder if, you know, do they bring in another guy similarly, you know, like, Hey, like maybe, maybe Des Ricks needs another year like Terry on did, or maybe he'll have a Terry on like season where he overtakes that guy and it becomes the next corner. Right. Like, I don't know. Those are, you know, same thing with all the guys that they've got playing at safety. Um, you know, and just, I don't know, these are, these are the thoughts that run through my head as I kind of see what Alabama is trying to do through the portal. So I just, I wasn't sure what you thought. So I just figured I'd throw it out there. Yeah. I mean, I, again, I, I kind of agree with you. I, I don't, you know, I would, pro I would, be pretty shocked if they don't go to the portal at least for one guy. Just with that was you know, my thought. Kool Aid gone, Taryn Arnold more than likely gone. Just you know, um, yeah. we're presuming think, that Trey Amos will return. Um, just because right. we haven't heard or seen anything different, and also like you know he'd have the opportunity to be that dude in right. a Nick Saban secondary. Like abs I like. I'm not going to speak for him, but like I would take advantage of that, right? <laughs> yeah, I would probably take advantage of that too. And 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 again, you know, we could kind of share as many thoughts or you know make hypothetical, which just with these things forever. But you know, maybe Des Ricks has looked incredible in practice, you know, right. and and you know, but Taron Arnold and Kool Aid McKinstry are you know Kool Aid's obviously an All American, and Taron Arnold played like an All American. Uh, they, they, there's just not a spot for Des Ricks right now. Maybe that's the right. case, but yeah, I mean, you can kind of speculate, go back and forth all you want, but you know, it's, it's just how Alabama and Nick Saban continues to load up in the secretary. It's, just, it's nothing new. Yeah. hundred percent. Um, wanted to have the Ryan Williams conversation. He was obviously he, he, five star in the 2025 class. He's long time Alabama commit reclassifies to 2024. The plan, correct me if I'm wrong. He will not be signing this week. He will be signing in February. So he will be a late enrollee, but even through the reclassification, he maintained his five-star status. Still, I believe like a top 15 overall player in the class, top 10 overall player in the class after 247 um, dropped their new rankings. Um, what, or I guess what went into his decision based on maybe conversations you've had with, with him and, and others and just why did he reclassify? And, you know, is I, you know, I know he's going to take his visits over the next couple months because he's not signing until February or at least, you know, like the true signing day period. But, um, you know, is, is is that something Alabama should be worried about or is he as locked in as locked in can be for somebody that's not going to sign for another couple months? Yeah. You know, start off with just with the decision to reclass. It was rumored for, you know, since before the season. Um, I personally believe it would happen before the season. But, you know, 
was was watching his kind of ceremony uh, last week, last Monday, and you know Jeff Kelly, the Saraland head coach, kind of hit on it too. And was it, my exact thoughts. It kind of speaks to the kid and person Ryan Williams is. You know, he knew this was going to be an option. His teammates knew this was going to be an option the entire year, but he chose to not do it until after the season, even after that state championship loss. He, you know, st- he decided to do it then. Um, but yeah, it wasn't a surprise. I, I think, you know, a lot of the scramble towards the end was, is he going to sign in, you know, in two days or are you going to sign in February? He's still got to finish up some classes. So he'll sign on February 9th, his birthday. Uh, he'll, he will be taking official visits. He's still trying to figure out what schools he's going to and when, uh, there was a rumor Auburn was going to get the last visit. I don't believe that's true anymore. It could end up being true, but right now he's still working out his plans. He mentioned schools like LSU, Texas, Alabama, Auburn possibly Georgia maybe getting an official visit. So, yeah, I mean, I think once this signing early signing period kind of wraps up, all the attention is going to, and rightfully so, turn back to Ryan Williams. You know, I, he was, he, after that state championship loss in Sarah Land where he, you know, had 11 catches for 242 yards and two touchdowns and an 86-yard punt return and a 12-yard rushing touchdown. He was uh, the best player on the field. Like, that's, <laughs> you know, no offense to Jalen Mbakwe. I mean, they were like 1A and 1B. Like, that was, good, you know, they were a, playing one-on-one. It's a good problem to have when you know you look up you look up at the score and there's eight touchdowns and all eight are uh, scored by Alabama commits. Anyway, uh, yeah, it, it, you know I, he's continued to tell Auburn people and he's continued to you know tell Alabama people too. He's locked in with Alabama, but you know the kid is not even 17 years old. That let you know let him take his visits. He spent the night after the state championship loss and took some took an unofficial visit to Alabama. Uh, took some photos with some teammates and his family and things like that. Last weekend, he was planning to be in Alabama on Saturday, but got invited to the Alabama-Mississippi All-Star Game. Uh, quickly made plans to go up to Hattiesburg and uh, won MVP. Uh, just slight work for Mr. Ryan Williams. Uh, Why not? And then, you know, most people have seen it if you have a phone or have a TV or anything like that. Ryan Williams was in town at Auburn on Sunday uh, with a loaded group of visitors and commits and targets for Auburn. Uh Bronny James, son of LeBron, and was playing at, for USC at the game. Take that with what you will. But, you know, Auburn's not going to stop here. They have not stopped here uh, recruiting Wyatt Williams. And, you know, with their receivers committed right now and Cam Coleman and Perry Thompson, uh, and I see, you know, again, Perry Thompson ultimately sticking with Auburn. Those two guys have been in Ryan Williams' ear uh, for a long time to come over there and, you know, get – a, a whole new group of wide receivers in, but at the same time, Jalen Mbakwe has been very vocal. A lot of other Alabama commits have been very vocal about him sticking with Alabama. Um, so, uh, the, you know, you, the most you can take is that surface. He says he's locked in with Alabama. I, I, I believe him. I, I don't think he's, you know, trying to just please everybody. Um, again, you know, he's going to take his visits. If he takes his visit to Auburn, which he will, there's no, you know, no reason to freak out. It, it was always going to happen. He's going to take an official visit to Alabama. You got to remember, this kid's a 2024 kid now. All these guys who are in 2024 had the last six, seven months, you know, up until a year to take official visits. He hasn't taken any yet because he's only, you know, a junior. Um, so he'll take his official visits. Um, let the kid have fun. Uh, we'll continue right. to, you know, follow that up until the end. And it should be a pretty wild, you know, six or so weeks but one thing to note too is there is a dead period so he you know he he for about a couple weeks he's not going to be able to go on campus so he's going to have to fit in probably five or four or five official visits however many he wants to take in like a week and a week and a half period so it'll be interesting to see how it all shakes out yeah absolutely that is something you will absolutely keep tabs on and i think a lot of the uh, college football world especially those here in alabama are going to be paying attention to um, back to kind of a big picture look at the rest of the 2024 class. I'm kind of curious your thoughts. I know that you've been talking to these kids for months. You've been watching a lot of their high school film. Um, you've been gathering intel from other experts in and around, you know, the 247 sports and recruiting worlds. Um, I'm kind of curious. I, I know I know you've talked a lot about Casey Poe, so maybe he's the answer to this. But which which recruit that plans on signing this week are you like most excited to see at the next level? Casey Poe. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> hey, if that's I'm, the answer, that's the answer. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Sterling Dixon. And, and I don't, you know, he had shoulder surgery a couple a week, week and a half, two weeks ago, I believe, something like that. So he's not gonna be able to participate in bowl practice. But just to be there, I think, is a big advantage. Anyway, aside from that, I, I just 
again, love his mindset. I, you know, he played for a lower classification for three years of Mobile Christian, then wanted to challenge himself and transferred to Spanish Fort, which is a class six A and plays teams like Sarah Land and Theodore. A lot of our you know listeners know the powerhouses they are uh, and thrived. I think he was third in the state in total tackles. Uh, you know double digit sacks. I think he's really going to fit in. He's always been an Alabama fan. He's talked about, you know, kind of repeatedly about how he wants to bring a national championship back to Alabama, uh, back to his home state, you know, loves Alabama. I think, you know, maybe he's a guy we see in two, three years. You know, we talked about it earlier of you know, the Tim Smiths and the Jeremiah Beamans and, you know, eventually, you know, you're going to cycle guys out and people are going to transfer and people are going to get hurt. And there's going to be new opportunities for guys like Sterling Dixon. I think he's a guy that, you know, can play with his hand in the dirt or stand up or at outside linebacker. You know, he played a lot of different positions over at Spanish Ford, which I think is ultimately going to help him down the road. I just love the fact that he went from, you know, kind of being the dude at Mobile Christian where he, you know, made approximately 100 tackles per game um, and to like jump to a larger classification because he wanted to challenge himself, right? Like if I'm a coach, I'm like, Dude, I don't even care how you do at that larger classification. The fact that you're making the jump and you transferred and you want to go seek out the challenge like that, that's big. Like, I think that's huge. And I can absolutely see why, you know, college coaches, but especially Alabama coaches would love that. Yeah. And I think that kind of speaks to like what I was saying earlier with a lot of these other guys that maybe aren't the five star or a top five of that position. Again, these guys want to get better. A lot of these guys that have been already at bowl practice, uh, you know, Talked about how I, I know I'm not going to start, but I want to be developed. So I, I, overall, I, I think it's a great group of guys. Yeah, maybe a three star according to industry experts, but a five star competitive character. You can't put, you know, that's not <laughs> something that you actually like put a grade on. But like, I can appreciate that. I really like that. Um, who do you think this is kind of a two part question? Who do you think can make an impact immediately? And then who do you think could have a big impact maybe two, three years down the road after they do get some development? And Sterling Dixon is off the list, so you got to pick somebody else. Okay. Immediately, I'm going to go Jalen Mbakwe. Just, you know, maybe it's not at quarterback, but, you know, I think I've talked with you about this. I've talked with John. And well, Mike he plans on playing too. defensive back, right? I think a lot of people, that's, yeah, that, that's, yeah. Yeah, I'm saying I don't know if he's going to make any immediate impact at defensive back, but maybe in the special teams. Just with you know, he's a number two athlete in the country. He won a seven a sec or won a state championship. Excuse me for Clay Chalkville. Uh, won MVP as a starting quarterback. Um, was not planning to be the starting quarterback during the summer, and but it, it, you know, with some changes over there, decided you know take over, do its best for him. I I think just getting him his hands on the ball, I think is going to be big. And, you know, quite frankly, if he makes enough big plays, you know, maybe on special teams or in practice, I could see him maybe, you know, getting factored into the offense. I really think Alabama is going to need to find a way to get him the ball. I think he adds another wrinkle and he can kind of line them up anywhere. And then two, three years down the road, it's probably a little bit of low hanging fruit, but I'm going to go Julian saying here, um, you know, he's in town the for quarterback. Really <laughs> <laughs> he's in town. He's in town for, uh, Bowl practice, you know, talking with him about how excited he was to be able to learn from Tommy Reese and Jalen Milrow uh, this year and next year. You know, uh, Jalen Milrow announced he's going to come back. I, you know, we could speculate all you want. I would assume he's going to be the starter next season. And I, Julian yeah. saying I think is fine with that um, uh, to get, you know, all these reps under your belt. But he's a guy that, you know, Elite 11 MVP, all these national analysts love him. Uh, his mentality, he kind of reminds me of Bryce Young just with his cool nature in the pocket and, you know, the way he answers questions and things like that. I think two, three years down the road and probably closer to two years, I think Saiyan's going to be a uh, big name in Tuscaloosa. Yeah. Well, and I like, you know, talking about competitive character when it comes to a guy like Sterling Dixon, like same thing for Jalen and Bakwe. Like, hey, my team needs a playmaker at quarterback because quarterback touches the ball every single offensive play, right? So let me be that dude. It reminds me, I, people who have been listening know that I came down to Tuscaloosa from Iowa and um, of the many things that I covered when I was in Iowa was high school football. And there was a very, very, very special player up in Iowa who I had the, like, I was just fortunate to get to cover him. Small school kid, but absolutely fantastic athletic talent, let alone football. Cooper DeGene. People are going to know Cooper DeGene because he's an All-American cornerback now for the University of Iowa. He has a future in the NFL, whether he goes this year or next year. He got hurt late in the season. But Cooper DeGene was one of those dudes similar to Jalen Mbakwe who just, you know, I'm the best dude on the field at my school, so I'm going to play quarterback. 
even though I know I'm going to go play corner and defensive back when you get to Iowa, right? And just the competitive character of that, again, that kind of buzzword that I know Saban loves to use, but like just the fact that he's like, I'm going to take on this challenge because it's something my team needs. Like, that's really cool. It wouldn't shock me at all to maybe see Jalen Mbakwe work his way into like punt or kick return duties when we're talking special teams, like can he make an impact there? Um, or, you know, we've talked about kind of the depth that's in the defensive back room right now. Could he be that like dime defensive back? Like when they put six on the field, could he be that last guy in? Could he work his way into star a little bit? Um, or, you know, could he work into safety? Maybe if Caleb down slip shifts down to star, I don't know. Like that's a dude like, you know, could you, or, you know, figure out some offensive plays to get the ball in his hand? Yes. Because I, I like, he's a fantastic athlete and obviously he helped clay chalk this past season, but you know, I think that's a dude that just has the football IQ that you just want on the field at some point, right? Like, obviously, he's got to earn it through spring practice and whatever he does through bowl prep over the next few weeks. But, you know, I think that's a dude that just, like, he gets the game. And, like, I think he, you know, he understands his role, but, you know, kind of similar to, you know, one of the things that people raved about Caleb Downs is, like, not only did he understand his role, he understood the other 10 guys' roles on the defense, too. So he understood how the whole thing moved back and forth. Jalen and Bakway feel – it seems like, just based on everything I've heard and everything I've seen, Seems like he's made up of very similar stuff. So it wouldn't surprise me at all to see him play pretty quickly, even if it's only in a limited capacity. Yeah, absolutely. I and you know, he it was funny. We talked about it when he, you know, first told me he was making the move to quarterback. You know, I was asking him, like, is this something you want to do? And he was like, you know, whatever the team needs, you know, he played quarterback like in Pee Wee football and things like that. But he said, you know, it, it, and talking to him after the state championship too, like as a corner, it helped him play quarterback, but playing quarterback these last couple months also helped him maybe become a better defensive player as well. Just, you know, be on the opposite side of it. So I, yeah. I, I again, it's a great, great, you know, addition and, and all good things for him, you know, just playing quarterback is kind of a blessing in disguise for him. Yeah. hundred um, percent. Wanted to give a shout out as well to um, Holman Wiggins, Alabama's wide receiver coach. This dude has been doing some freaking work on the recruiting trail, according to Brett and others. Um, you know, in the 247 Sports Recruiting Network, Wiggins has played a direct role in recruiting the following players. Julian Sayan, five-star quarterback. Ryan Williams, five-star receiver. Xavier Brown, four-star cornerback. Casey Poe, your boy, four-star offensive lineman. Peyton Woodyard, four-star DB. Amari Jefferson, four-star wide receiver. Jameer Grimsley, four-star corner. And then Rico Scott, four-star receiver. Previous years, Wiggins has also recruited Ja'Cory Brooks, Jalen Hale, Kobe Prentice, Kendrick Law, Amari Nyblack, Antonio Kite, Cole Adams, Malik Benson. A lot of these guys are pest catchers. Yes. Are they all highly touted prospects that Alabama wanted badly and also got? Also, yes. Per the 247 Sports recruiter rankings, Holman Wiggins ranks number one nationally for this 2024 cycle. Yeah, you know, it kind of takes into account which direct prospects you had a role in bringing to your program, right? Um, and so the fact that he was number one overall in the country, pretty impressive stuff. I'm curious, Brett, like what have you heard from some recruits, um, if you have at all, just about Wiggins and the way that he's kind of able to do this job really, really well? Yeah. And, you know, I, I would have to go do a little bit of more research. I, I don't – he may have been number one in years past before. I know he's always tip, typically pretty up there. And, you know, most guys you talk to – um, you know, of course, offensive linemen are going to mention, you know, coach Eric Walford a little bit more, but you know, these DBs and these, and these receiver and pass catchers are always bringing up Holman Wiggins and certainly coach Tavares, Rob T Rob as well, but Holman Wiggins keeps getting brought up. You know, he was all over the place these last two weeks. He, you know, stopped in California and went to go see Xavier Brown, Peyton Whittier, Julian Sam that made the trip to go see Rico Scott. Then was in with, uh, Saban to go see Perry Thompson. I, I think this guy can just relate very well and he, he he knows what he's doing but yeah a lot of these commits bring him up talk about the dude he is you know can have fun off the field uh but when he gets on the field he knows you know he means business and you know alabama fans for years and years has he's been a, a unbelievable recruiter uh for the crimson tide yeah seems like he uh he is the type of guy that could recruit an eskimo to the desert um you know not gonna rule that out we'll see uh, you know he's pulling guys internationally he's pulling guys from all over the freaking country California to Alabama, Pennsylvania to Alabama, um, Kansas City to Alabama, right? 816 stand up. 
So just, I thought that was really cool. I know that that was something that you put on the board. And so I just kind of dug into it a little bit more and it's just like, whoa, okay. This is insanely impressive. So just wanted to give that dude a shout out. Want to give Brett one more shout out. Um, that's kind of all we've got on today's show, but I wanted to, before we signed off here, Brett, you've got a lot of stuff coming over the next few days. Um, again, we're recording this on Monday night. There's a lot of recruiting intel and information that's kind of fluid. This will come out on Tuesday. But, Brett, um, what else do you want to share about some of the stuff that you've got planned over the next couple of days as we near this early signing window? Yeah, I guess this shows how kind of fluid we are uh, in the middle of this podcast, which, again, is on Monday night. Steve Wiltfong, obviously director of scouting, uh, just to uh, put a crystal ball forecast in Alabama's favor for Kevin Riley, uh, who we hit on a little bit earlier in the show, uh, four-star Miami running back out of Northport, Alabama, Tuscaloosa County. Again, this was a uh, – he was in for an official visit this weekend. This was a trip the Miami staff did not want this to happen. Uh, you know, guys, local running backs, uh, Brian Robinson's the name that comes to mind, Hillcrest, Tuscaloosa, ended up being uh, pretty good for the Crimson Tide. And, you know, I, I saw something earlier as well. Miami just flipped a guy – I can't remember the name or the school, the amount of names and schools I'm seeing – Every minute, dude. There's so much. many. Like I like, <laughs> you're zoned in on Alabama stuff, man. Because I'm the same way. Like I've seen a ton of stuff about you know, you know, Mary Flipmas and this yeah. and that, and transfer portal stuff. And it seems, I yeah, that's if you forgot names, who knows how much I don't know. Yeah, but so yeah, Steve Wilfong at you know Monday night put in a crystal ball for Kevin Riley. He says he thinks Alabama's class is going to end up with him. I think Alabama fans are really going to like him watching some film. I'll probably put some, you know, huddle highlights and things like that up on the board once we get off here for people to look at. Uh, but yeah, you know, again, a lot of good coverage coming to Alabama. Yeah. Or excuse me, to Bama 247 in the next couple of days. You know, we've had a couple of meetings, the whole team just getting all on the same page to create, you know, provide the best content and coverage we can for you. We'll have signee stories. We'll have flip stories, you know, wh whatever happens, we're going to have it covered. Uh, be sure to, you know, have your text alerts on. I know John's going to be sending out some newsletters and other text alerts when things are, you know, are worth texting and bugging you guys for. Because um, I know you guys have real jobs and, you know, aren't just on 247 sports rankings all day. But yeah, a ton of coverage coming and uh, looking forward to a good week and, you know, a couple more weeks, a couple more days until. Maybe it slows down a little bit. I can take a little bit of a break, but we'll, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Oh, we will. Uh, we appreciate you as always, Brett, especially at this time of the year where I know you're plenty busy. You've got better things to do than to come chop it up with me on the show, but I really do appreciate it. We'll be back later this week. We're probably going to let Brett crash later this week. So I'll see if I can link up with Rodak or Talti and we'll uh, kind of rehash everything that happens between Wednesday and Thursday. So we'll give, uh, we'll give Brett a, a well-deserved break once we get through this initial early signing period. Um, in the meantime, be sure to rate and review the show wherever you listen to your podcast, Apple, Stitcher, Spotify, even our Bama 247 YouTube page. Subscribe to Bama 247 and 247 Sports. Guys, if you loved all the intel that Brett has brought to the show tonight, um, you are absolutely going to love everything that he's bringing to the Bama 247 website and the uh, Bama 247 board, the VIP board, because everything recruiting is behind the paywall. And we want you guys to take advantage of that. So I believe we're still running a 50% off for a year VIP membership. That's $50 roughly for 12 whole months of the best Alabama sports content and the best Alabama recruiting content on the internet. I believe that's also an upgradable subscription VIP membership. So those of you who are already in, take advantage of that especially if you're an Alabama fan who loves recruiting. Thank you again, Brett, so much for joining us. We appreciate you guys listening as always, and we will talk to you all again soon.